This breadboard is carved with the words Marcus and Susie, beautifully carved in Roman lettering into the wood. And it was done by my father Nigel in 1975, the year of our marriage. So this was a wedding present. And the wood, well, can you see these um, channels? This was a draining board next to the sink. So the water from the um, uh, crockery and cutlery would flow back into the sink before the time of fitted kitchens. And that was probably something like um, early 20th century between the wars, maybe even earlier. So a beautiful teak carved into an exceptional present for somebody's wedding. So I've continued to do that. And so has Christopher, my son, three generations of making wedding presents. I'm going to show you how to do it. So what wood should we use? In the garage, I've got um, quite a stock which I've collected for this purpose. And um, quite often it's um, a piece of cherry. As you can see, it's rough hewn, it's um, bowed, it's old. This is a tree planted probably in the 1920s and chopped down in the, about the year 2000. Uh, so I've had it ever since. But a plain bit of wood like this can be made into a board. Here is one that I did earlier where I have already cut the chamfer on which we engrave the letters. Now we need to provide a finish to the um, top of the board and uh, I'm going to use a, uh, an electric plane. They are lethally dangerous though so be careful. Uh, you can use a hand plane but um, the wood is very tough, that's very hard work. Also, if you haven't got one, make yourself a, um, a little uh, uh, angle piece of wood so that the uh, wood is held and doesn't move away. You can't put it in a vise, of course, because um, you need the full surface. need to sand the surface because this is pretty rough and uh, we need to put some sanding sealer on later. So um, get your um, belt sander and uh, probably a new paper on it. I'm using an old sock and uh, just pouring some onto the surface, spreading it out. You don't need to rub it in or anything, just um, spread it evenly and avoid drips on the side if you can. And um, I tend to uh, do the edges as well. It just smartens it up. You always need a bit extra on the end of the grain. So I've been away for a couple of hours, had some lunch, and um, I've let this uh, sanding sealant dry fully. Now I'm going to use some um, emery paper to just um, smooth the surface anything left by the sanding sealant and uh, you need to get rid of that dust afterwards with the humor. But really you're just taking the imperfections off the sanding sealant before you give it another coat. Right, so uh, we've had three coats of the sanding sealant and light sanding and now it's time to uh, wax them up for um, getting a shine. This is Bry Wax and I'm using the clear one. Don't apply it too thickly because it tends to bubble up. Don't forget to do the polish before you carve the letters because you don't want wax jamming up inside the letters you've just carved. Now it's just elbow power because there's no other way to get it shiny than to go on rubbing the wax in. I'm going to, I can just see the shine coming up, but I'm going to put another layer of wax on. As you polish, you'll start seeing the marks of the sander and the plane but 
it really doesn't matter because all you see from a distance is the pattern of the wood which is so attractive and the more you polish the more you'll show the contrast in the wood and all of a sudden that will start being a little bit shinier. Don't you hate it when the uh, board is not flat? So if you're getting this knocking now it's going to be a real drag for the people using it as a breadboard. So why not get yourself some uh, felt pads or cork pads. We'll put four but we'll cut them to right, size. We're going to uh, carve these indoors because it's a bit chilly in the garage in um, February but before we go in let me show you the tools to bring in. Firstly I think that these um, V chisels are essential doesn't matter what size because you're just using the tip of the V. Get it nice and sharp. This is what you're going to make the basics of the letter with. If you just use the knife, and here's a kit I use by Persona, P-E-R-S-O-N-N-A. Just use this plain blade. But cutting cherry wood like this, that is a hiding to nothing. It is very hard wood and curving, carving the curves that is very difficult. So my advice is do the bulk of the letter with the V chisels and hammer and then use the knife only to clean up the serifs. I'll show what you I do need to do that. next is decide how the letters are going to be and how do I my form My dad them? of course didn't have a computer and had to do the letters freehand but um, it, nowadays if you just open up um, for example Word and uh, type in the names of the people getting married Louis and Lena, do then you want to apples. put it into um, landscape because you want it uh, longer than the width of a page and you want the size of the type to be something in the region of 96, um, 72 doesn't quite fit the page and you want to um, have it cover the page exactly so uh, increase the size until you're oops too much like that and um, then you can um, print that and then you've got the template from which to do your carving. For affixing this um, template to the board you need to trim it so that it's nice and narrow and you can see I'm using, well you can use a, um, anything, a ruler and a knife if necessary to uh, clip it back so you've got something like um, five centimeters sorry five millimeters top and bottom of the names. So now it's time to do the carving. Sometimes I put the uh, words on with a gap in the middle or I put them right at the edge because they're going to get divorced and you can then cut the board down the middle. However in the case of Louis and Lena they're such an adorable couple and Louis is my godson that I'm going to put the ampersand in. So once you've lined it up and you've got the beginning and the end centred you need to hold this down with sellotape while you knife the outline and I'm going to turn it round so that I can see what I'm doing and the first thing to do is to cut through the paper and score a line onto the wood it doesn't have to be very deep because all you're doing is tracing the outline of the letter for when you take the paper off and then you start carving along the line of the letter. Now the serif is an important function in carving and it should be said that you must choose a plain Roman font with serifs and the most um, classic typefaces is Times New Roman. So if in doubt use Times New Roman. The serifs actually derive from carving because they are a natural way of ending a stroke and you'll see when we're carving how that pans out um, in action. Mark the outside of some of the curves so you know the extent of where the letter is going to go to and any broad strokes which are not too curvy, coherent. 
So when you've finished drawing the outline, lift the stencil off making sure none of the sellotape stays on the wood. Keep that handy just to um, look at to remind yourself of something that you've forgotten while you're carving. And now I've got, don't know how well you can see that, but I've got the outline enough to follow with the chisel. I've got a nice hard and sharp chisel here and I'm going to start with the long lines. Here's the top, here's the bottom. Don't start all the way at the top because the uh, V will make a mark you don't want. Now I don't know if you can see but um, that was not quite deep enough because the cusp of the chisel has not come to the edges of what I've marked. So rather than cut like that, increase the angle and then adjust your angle so that you get the width of cuts that you need. Take it down to the bottom and just leave it now there. For the O, you need to start off with just a small gouge, but then to thicken it, increase the angle. That's gone quite deep, so I'm going to push down, reduce the angle. Uh, it's just beginning to lift there, so here's the thing. Why not go from the other side and see if you can join it and prevent that lifting up too much? Remember I said don't start the downstroke right at the top because you'll get a V in the wrong place. So to clean up here, start at the same angle and run the stroke up to the top. Now normally you'll um, continue to chisel all the letters in the name, but I'll now show you how to make the serifs. The blade is at quite an angle now, and I'm cutting the serif. Then from above, I'm just cutting a little V, because that's a nice way to end the downstroke of the L for Louis. Don't forget the straight stroke of the L. So for me, the L is finished. And so here's the finished board, Louis and Lena.